Hello, my name is David Stewart. I'm the strategic lead for NHS Library and Knowledge Services in the north of England. And I'm also the lead for the Workforce Planning and Development Workstream within Knowledge for Healthcare. This presentation is designed to give you and your team some wider context for outcome four of the new Quality and Improvement Outcomes Framework, which sets out our ambition that all NHS organisations receive library and knowledge services provided by teams with the right skill mix to deliver on organisational and knowledge for healthcare priorities. Please do review the more detailed presentation by Holly Case Wyatt on the Knowledge for Healthcare blog. As I have said, I'm providing you and your team with some wider context, and I'm going to use the five steps of workforce planning and development in Health Education England's STAR tool as a framework for this presentation. The five steps are supply, upskilling, new roles, new ways of working, and finally, leadership. If you are not familiar with the STAR model, watch out for a new webinar that we are developing with HEE colleagues that will explain what the STAR is and how it can be used within your organisation for work, workforce planning and development. We hope the webinar will be available in early 2020. So let's start with supply. Librarianship and knowledge management are not classified as NHS professions as such. HEE does not commission courses in our field from universities in the way that the NHS does, say, for doctors and nurses. Nevertheless, there are developments you should be aware of where we are aiming to influence the supply of new staff into our specialist workforce. Health Education England has agreed a recommendation on the staff ratio of qualified librarians to NHS staff. Check out the news on this in January 2020. We have been working with Manchester Metropolitan University's Master's Programme in Library and Information Management to develop a 12 week elective module in health librarianship. This will give students an in-depth understanding of what it is like to work in health libraries. The first students started in September 2019 and our ambition is that students who take this model module will choose the NHS as a place to work. We aim to extend the Manchester Metropolitan University model to at least one other department of library and information sciences in England. We are also working with SILIP and HEE colleagues to support the rollout of the new level three apprenticeship in library information and archives work. To find out more, please contact your regional lead or see the Knowledge for Healthcare blog. Finally, we have a strategic relationship with the Library and Information Sciences Department at the University of Applied Sciences in Chur in Switzerland, where an English language distance learning masters in medical librarianship is in development. As we hear more, so we will keep you in touch. Moving on to the second of our five steps, which is upskilling. Over the last five years, we have put in place a range of resources to support the continuing professional development of you and your teams. The Learning Zone is a great online resource covering a wide range of generic and specialist subjects. If you can't find what you're looking for, let us know and we'll see if we can add a new resource to support you. Our national CPD team designs and delivers a range of courses and events to meet your development needs. We base the programme on two things. <clears throat> Firstly, the biannual development needs survey. Please make sure that you and your team complete this when it comes out. The 2019 survey has just taken place and the next one will be in 2021. 
Secondly, we identify hot topics that emerge as the NHS and library and knowledge services change. We know that organisations evolve very fast in our world, so we want to help you keep up to speed. Working with SILIP, we have developed a health version of the professional knowledge and skills base, often known as the PKSB. This tool will help you identify what the overall skill set is in our field. You can complete a self-assessment to identify your strength and areas for development. Use of the PKSB is central to the preparation of, for both SILIP chartership and fellowship. It can also help you consider the skill mix of your team. Get everyone to complete the self-assessment. Finally, we are exploring the range of digital skills frameworks that exist to help you examine the digital skills in your team. Again, more information will be available next year. The third of our five steps is new roles. Here we are specifically encouraging a number of transitions within the NHS library and knowledge services workforce. We believe that embedded librarian roles are critical to ensuring that the best available evidence is mobilised within NHS teams, clinical, management and executive, to underpin patient care and safety. Many of your services now have clinical or outreach librarian posts and roles. We want to see many more. Much of our work is evolving, taking on new and extended roles in knowledge management. Over time, we believe that this will become the everyday core of what we do. At the same time, many of your services have developed innovative ways of making sure that patients, carers and families can access and use information about their condition, treatment and lifestyle. We see that there will be new roles in this area as we work with clinicians and public library partners to develop this further. Finally, in this section, I would like to flag a set of resources for role redesign that we have put together for you. At the moment, this covers 12 roles, from library manager to clinical librarian, and from information skills trainer to senior library assistant. Each of these resources provides an outline of what the role is about, a PKSB summary, a person specification, and a whole lot more. You can use them to help you think about the skill mix in your team and it might also help your line manager to understand what a new role like clinical librarian is all about. The fourth step in the STAR model is to explore new ways of working. Librarians have always looked at finding ways of making scarce resources such as staff, time and expertise as well as budgets go further. Partnership working such as our national and regional interlending schemes are good examples of how we already work together to make the best use of our time and money. We believe that partnership working can be extended in other ways across our 190 NHS library services. NHS librarians were early adopters of computer technology, using them for online searching and library management systems. We want to reduce the number of library management systems to between four and seven across England, making better use of our purchasing power, sharing cataloguing records, and crucially, releasing your staff time to do the important work of mobilising evidence and knowledge to support clinicians and patients. Rapid technological change is here and now. It will offer many opportunities to change the way we do things, the way we work. Make sure you have read the recent Topol review, which looks at the impact that technology will have on all of us over the next 20 years. Picking up on Topol, SILIP is leading a similar review to examine the impact of technology on our profession. How will technology change the work we do in 2025, 
or in 2030. This review will start in 2020 and report in 2021. Watch out for news. Our fifth and final step is to ensure there is effective leadership and we see two strands to this. Firstly, ensuring that our NHS Library Knowledge Services workforce, all of you, have opportunities to develop your own leadership skills, honing your understanding of what leadership is and is not, and helping us to consider succession planning for senior roles. Over the last four years, we have developed two leadership programmes, one in partnership with SILIP, for people who might be described as mid-career and new to leadership, and one in partnership with the NHS Leadership Academy for senior leaders. Over 70 colleagues have now participated in these courses. We will run the Senior Leadership Programme again in 2020 and are exploring what next for the mid-career course. Watch out for announcements. Secondly, none of this just happens. Working through the five steps, I'm sure you can see that the work to deliver knowledge for healthcare requires leadership. That leadership at national and regional level is embodied in Health Education England's National Library and Knowledge Services Leads team. HEE is the steward of NHS Library and Knowledge Services. We are passionate about the role health librarians and knowledge specialists play in patient care. We need a great workforce to make it so. I hope this presentation has helped you see the wider context of the work we are all doing to plan the future of the NHS Library and Knowledge Services workforce. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions. My email and mobile phone number are on the slide. Thank you all very much.